Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. Hello and welcome back to Theory of Pets. As you guys know, dog grooming, pet grooming is one of the largest parts of the pet industry. Uh, Many people take their dogs for professional grooming or their pets for professional grooming, which can get expensive. It can also be really strenuous on the pet. So some parents are looking to save a little bit of money, make things easier on their pets and groom at home. This sounds so easy, right? Just brush your dog, bathe them, maybe give them a quick trim, you know, nothing major. Um, So that's kind of how most people, I think, think about it when they get into it, that it's not going to be a big deal and they can totally handle it on their own. What a lot of us fail to realize is that uh, certain dogs have anxiety about grooming. Dogs need to be trained to actually be groomed um, and be comfortable with it. So there's that aspect of it. Um, It's not just brushing and bathing either. You need to clean your dog's ears, uh, dental hygiene. There are other types of grooming depending on a pet's needs. Um, There may be a more extensive haircut needed. Nail clipping is always needed for every pet. So there's a lot more to it than just brushing and bathing. Um, And this week I actually talked to Megan Mouser. She is a professional groomer and the Andis uh, education manager. Andis is one of the top companies in pet grooming products for professional and at-home groomers. They make a, um, they have a very wide range of products for, um, you know, groomers that are going to use them for hours and hours to, you know, home groomers that are looking for something a little bit cheaper. So, um, there's a link to their website, the Andis website, on um, our website. So if you're listening to this on social media or YouTube, just click that link below. You can jump onto our website and it'll take you right to there. Um, and there's a bunch of helpful links. One of the other links that I want to mention too before I play the interview for you um, is the Andis Grooming College. And this is an online site. It's Dog Grooming 101. Um, they call it Andis Grooming College on their site. And it teaches the basic principles, theories, and techniques of grooming. You can select what animal you're grooming, if it's a dog, a cat, a horse, uh, livestock, whatever it might be. And then um, there is all kinds of beneficial information on there that just teaches you the basics of it, everything that you'll need to know. So if you're a beginner, um, you can certainly, this is a great little um, tool to use to educate yourself about what you're going to need to do, the products that you're going to need, that kind of stuff. And if you have done some home grooming before, but you're trying to get a little more in depth and make sure that you're doing all the things that your pet needs, again, you know, this is a great tool to use to sort of um, educate yourself and learn some more about some of those detailed things, um, like certain kinds of haircuts or um, products that you're going to need to keep in your dog grooming or cat grooming, whatever it might be, toolkit. Um, So again, this week, you know, I talked to Megan and she is um, a great resource. She told me all about, um, you know, some things that you should and shouldn't do, uh, some must-have supplies, some of the biggest no-nos that uh, she sees, things that you just absolutely shouldn't do that new groomers should stay away from. And also she talked about what to do if your pet is scared or uneasy about grooming, how to spot that, things that you might look for, and uh, what to do there. So this is a really great interview, and I'm excited to share it with you guys today. Some pet owners believe that dogs with short coats don't need regular grooming. Um, Is it true that every dog has regular grooming needs, even if they don't have a long coat? Yes. um, Actually, even hairless dogs need regular grooming and you know when you think of regular grooming uh, it's outside the realm of just the coat and hair it's skin health um, nail health te- uh, teeth and um, ears and um, so especially with shorter coats you'll see that they actually shed quite a bit so keeping them in a regular regimen of brushing improves not only um, you know their tolerance for it, but also uh, increases the circulation in the skin and and makes the coat a lot healthier. So (laughs) the long version, but yes, 
they all need regular grooming. Yeah, I think it's one of the biggest misconceptions that I come across in the grooming part of my job is that people, um, when they're especially looking to adopt a a new dog, they'll look for a short-haired breed thinking that its grooming needs are going to be, you know, minimal, very minimal. And um, as you said, we have a Labrador, which who we love dearly, and she's short-coated, but she sheds like crazy. So she actually, um, some shorter coats, you know, actually require more maintenance than the longer ones in some cases. Yeah, it's very true. And grooming isn't just a benefit for the dog. Obviously, there are a lot of benefits for the dog health-wise, but um, can you tell us some of the benefits that regular grooming will have on your relationship with your dog? So regular grooming is almost like a bonding experience for any pet, Um, especially I know you mentioned, you know, adopting a dog. A lot of those dogs aren't used to regular interaction with a human being. So grooming is a great way that's both beneficial for you because you you can reduce shedding and, and other things, keep the, the coat tangle free, but also the pet is learning to trust you and um, get used to interactions as you um, both have like your quote unquote grooming sessions together. And it's best to start um, doing that every day at a normal time makes it more like a routine. So if it's, you know, after dinner, you just get into the routine of brushing them. You want to start small, like two, three minutes and build your way up. Um, You'll find that eventually you'll sit down with a brush and and they should come right over to you because it's it's more about the time with you than than the act of brushing or combing or whatever it is that you're going to be doing. Yeah, I think that's a great point, especially, um, you know, the regular time, just kind of work it into your routine so your dog knows when to expect it. Um, That's one thing that I hadn't thought of was, uh, you know, a a lot of dogs that come from a shelter or rescue either don't have a lot of experience with people or haven't for quite some time. So maybe they're going to be a little standoffish, especially when it comes to grooming and all the tools used to groom. Yeah, introducing new tools, too, you you can do the same way. So if they're used to a certain kind of brush, you kind of want to remember to start over if you're introducing something brand new. So you may be using, like, a softer brush and you want to try a new de-shedding tool. Um, Remember to start with the lesser amount of time in each every, you know, each and every new tool that you're, you're adding in especially if it's like a vibrating tool, like a clipper or a trimmer. Yeah, that's so important. I know a lot of dogs are very timid of those vibrating tools. Many of the basic grooming tasks like bathing and brushing, um, nail clipping, that kind of stuff can be done at home. What advice would you give for a new dog owner who just adopted a pet and wants to learn to take care of some of these needs at home if they've never had experience with grooming? My number one piece of advice for new pet parents that are wanting to tackle some of these grooming things at home is don't try to do it all at once. Um, These are things that you're going to be teaching yourself essentially as well. So start small. If it's an adopted dog, if you can help it, sometimes they're in really bad condition. You have to do certain things on that first day. But if you can help it, don't do anything grooming related that first day because they're likely to be very nervous and scared and it's not going to be the best experience, not because grooming is a bad experience, but because that day for them is just hectic and there's a lot going on. So, um, you know, start small, start with things that are easier to accomplish, like brushing, teeth brushing is super easy and oftentimes rewarding, you know, even bathing, start, you know, with a very easy bath. Um, Don't go into a full like regimen of you know, shampoo, conditioner, deodorize, you know, just shampoo, rinse twice um, and, and get them out of there and make it really simple that first time. And then you can kind of add on to your regimen as time goes on and remember that the dog or cat feeds off of you and your emotions. So if you're really nervous, they're likely to feel more nervous. It'd be like if you sit down in a barber chair, stylist chair to get your hair cut and your groomer or your you know, Barbara was like, hey, I don't really know what I'm doing today, but you just sit still and we'll get it taken care of. Um, You know, they sense that kind of nervousness from us. And so we just have to be kind of zen and chill as we're building in our new routines. Excellent information. Are there any tasks that you would not recommend, um, especially like an inexperienced groomer do and maybe just leave to the professionals? Um, I would say anything extremely troublesome so if you've adopted a dog and it's 
severely matted. And severely matted means the hair is like pelted. You can't break apart the mat enough to see the skin. And it seems as if it's all one piece or an area may feel that way. Leave that to the professional. A shaving an extremely matted pet is, is actually very difficult um, to, do, to do and oftentimes can be unpleasant for the pet. And so it's, it's just, it's a bad, it's a bad combination of things for you to try to do by yourself. And then um, anal glands are best left to the professional because there's a lot of things there that a, that a vet or a groomer would recognize that maybe a pet parent shouldn't do unless they've been taught by a professional to do it. Um, but everything else is very doable um, on your own. Do you have any, obviously with all the different grooming tests, there's so many supplies out there. Um, do you have any recommendations on the must-have supplies that if you're going to be grooming at home, what should you have in your toolkit? Pick a brush that's relevant to your pet um, and one that you both like so that when you're using it, it's, it's a good experience. Make sure that if the dog's hair is longer than an inch and a half that you also have a comb. Metal combs are better than the plastic combs, but you can brush, brush, brush. If you don't have a comb, you're not getting into that coat deep enough if it's longer than an inch and a half to actually prevent any matting from happening underneath that point. You're gonna need a pair of nail clippers. I oftentimes recommend for pet parents to have a nail grinder um, simply because grinding is less scary for the pet parent to do. Um, the, the, the pet Either way, they're both great tools, but grinding is just less scary because you're less likely to nix the quick, which is the vein that is inside of the nail, and oftentimes people are afraid to make bleed. Grinding is a lot easier, you know, um, think of even humans. It's a lot easier to file. You can see what you're doing. You're taking it off uh, a lot less at a time, and you're able to kind of gauge that better. Um, So brush comb, nail tools whether it be a nail clipper or a grinder, um, you're going to, if your dog has medium to long hair, you're going to need a clipper and a trimmer. Um, make sure that the, the tool you're using is strong enough for the coat type that you have. There are tons of tools out there. Um, you know, I work for Andis and they, they, they have an array of things that are perfect for everybody. Um, trimmers are great because any dog that goes outside, hair that grows in between the pads, can pick up all kinds of stuff and bring it inside, and we don't really want that as pet parents. But also, if you live in an area of snow, they can get those chemicals in their feet, and it's really not good for them. So you want kind of something to brush the hair and comb the hair, and then something to take care of nails, and then something to remove hair when it's in areas we don't need it, like the potty areas and the feet. What are some of the biggest no-nos that you can warn new groomers about? Um, I know we talked a little bit about those um, tasks that maybe they should leave to the professionals, but um, are there mistakes, common mistakes that you see new groomers making, things that they should be careful of, things they should um, avoid? Yeah, I think the number one thing, um, especially when I was a pet stylist, was pet parents try to remove mats with scissors. Um, and that's a huge no-no because mats are obviously a big chunk of knotted hair, fur, um, and to, to get it out, you have to get the scissors under the mat. And a lot of times you either see them take it so short that it's not really fixable after that, or um, you can actually injure the pet because it's really hard to see under a mat and you're just cutting, trying to get it off. Um, always, tr- you know, use a clipper in that situation. Um, I would say go with the growth of hair you see a lot of people go against the the growth of the coat and so you should you should always go from the occiput or the back of the head which is there's a bump on most dogs right there just the back of the skull toward the tail and then down toward the legs and a lot of people go tail to head for some reason but that's um it actually is not the best way to go with the coat, it's a lot harder to get it even cut that way. That's great advice. I, I do know a lot of people go, I, I don't know why that is either, I guess from the tail up to the neck, but um, that is something that you do see quite often. 
What should a dog owner do if they adopt a pet that's scared or um, really uneasy about being groomed? And I know we touched just briefly on, you know, dogs that haven't had a lot of human contact, but let's say now they're they're fine with the human and they don't mind being pet and rubbed and maybe even brushed, but some of those other grooming tasks like uh, maybe teeth brushing, nail clipping, things like that, um, they're really uneasy about. I would say before you, you know, use any type of tool on them that might make them uneasy or nervous. Um, There are certain parts of the body that we don't pet or touch on a regular basis that have to get groomed, which can be the triggers for these kind of adverse behaviors when you try to groom. So remember to play with their feet. And if you have a dog that grows hair on the face, remember to play with the hair on the bridge of the nose, right in front of the eyes, under the chin, practice holding Um, the head still with the hair under the chin, um, those will really help you kind of maneuver and hold the pet. And then just like we talked about brushing, um, you know, and building yourself up or building the relationship up with the animal, it's the same thing with tools. So if it's a clipper, take, if it's a detachable blade clipper, you can take the blade off and just run the clipper on the animal with nothing on it just to get them used to the sound and the vibration. Or even with a clipper on, you can or blade on, you can you can hold it opposite end and just kind of get them used to that. Or I've seen a lot of people use like like vibrating toothbrush that they don't oh, use anymore yeah. that doesn't have you know that something with a similar sound the to get them used to that. That usually helps a lot. Treats go a long way with dogs. <laughs> I saw a video on Instagram the other day of a lady that washes her dog by putting peanut butter on the sh- like the side of the shower to keep them in there long enough oh, for her to bathe them. Good. I mean, anything <laughs> like that you can do to keep them still is golden. Um, and, you know, they get used to it over time, but you got all of this stuff is going to be new to both of you. So it's just finding that routine and easing your way in and building confidence, not only in yourself, but the animal as well. Should new pet owners be looking for certain signs of aggression, Um, speaking of, you know, being nervous and and uneasy when they're being groomed, um, are there certain signs that they should look for when they're grooming for the first time or the first few times um, that would signal aggression? And if they do notice those signs, what should they do then? There are definitely things to keep an eye out for. Pets that are obviously growling or showing their teeth, I would say uh, don't you know, just stop what you're doing. That pet is obviously very afraid for whatever reason, and you might have to kind of work your way up to whatever it was that you're trying to do. When a pet's ears are down and back, it's a very silent sign of aggression, but it basically means, like, I'm not sure about what you're doing, and I'm feeling very defensive. If their hair is sticking up, that's another sign. You also want to watch out for signs of stress. Um, That's urinating for no apparent reason or if they like poop they're very scared I know it sounds funny but if they just kind of poop for no reason there there's a reason that people say they got the poop scared out of them that's a sign that the dog is very scared or cat because likely what happens is in a in a situation like that where they're scared they do turn to aggression because they don't have a way to communicate in other in any other way if if they seem unusually nervous or scared in those ways or showing their teeth then you want to just stop what you're doing and try you know try a different thing try to ease into it another way introduce the tool a different way you know try to do something different and remember not all pets can be groomed at home you know uh there's there's a lot of professionals. Some some pets have to be sedated for grooming if they're that afraid of something that's happening. But that is not the norm. That is, you right. know, very, I would say maybe, you know, less than 1%. But it's good to keep an eye out for those things for sure. Absolutely. And I think, you know, often, especially when we're talking about rescue animals, you know, you, you don't know what you're getting into. And I, I know like you um, mentioned about the first day and it's really for the first few weeks that dog's getting used to the new environment. And when you're throwing these new things in like grooming, um, you know, like you said, hopefully it will be something that you can maybe introduce, you know, take a step back, introduce a little bit more gradually and work your way um, up to that, you know, at the dog's pace. Absolutely. I hope you got 
as much out of that interview as I did. I learned a lot from Megan, and I really appreciate her coming on the show and speaking with us. Um, if you guys have any questions about like the type of brush or shampoo or clippers or anything like that to use on your dog, um, I would definitely suggest getting on the Andis website. If you're listening to this podcast on social media or YouTube, you can click the link right below it, and that will take you to our site. There's a link to Andis's website on there. There's a link to their grooming course that I mentioned in the beginning of this podcast as well on there. Um, And of course, you can jump on our partner website, topdogtips.com, and there is tons of information and some video guides on there as well if you're looking to choose the right brush or shampoo or things like that for your dog. um, There's a lot of great information on there as well. Do your research. You know, you have to pick a product that's going to work for your dog, for their coat type and um, their size and things like that, depending on um, the product that you're choosing for example, if you're choosing a brush, you don't want to choose a teeny tiny brush made for a Yorkshire Terrier. If you're brushing a St. Bernard, that's going to take you forever. Um, same thing with clippers. You want to choose clippers that are going to meet your dog's size, nail clippers as well. Uh, small breeds have very um, – much more thin nails than the big thick nails of the large and extra large breeds. So keep that stuff in mind. Uh, Don't just go out and buy the first thing that you see. You really need to do some research and um, talk to a groomer or some kind of an expert at your local pet store or something like that to find the right product. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can get on our website, theoryofpets.com. Leave your questions there. If you record your question, I might use it on a future podcast if you're interested in that. You can also just email your questions and I'll try to answer those. If you have any questions specifically for Megan, I can pass those on to her and try and get some answers for you guys. So um, be sure to take advantage of that as well if you have any grooming specific questions. So while you guys are on theoryofpets.com, I'd also really appreciate it if you could jump on. uh, You can click the link for iTunes and just leave me a quick review. Um, The more reviews that I get, it helps me when I approach experts like Megan to try and get them to come on the show. If they can see that people are watching it and liking it, they're a lot more likely to do so so if you guys could leave me a quick iTunes review I'd really appreciate it and uh, thanks for watching guys I will be back next time with some more great pet related information